This is the XFX Thick V3 RX 5700 XT. To remove the heat sink from the GPU, PCB, and everything, there's only so many screws. So you got your four main GPU core screws, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, to where you can take this heat sink off. What I actually did is I pried up from the back ever so carefully, wiggling a little bit, and then lifted it up. Your fan connector is gonna be here in the bottom right if the uh, PCIe slot's facing you. And then of course there's all this extra chrome plastic bezeling. It's really annoying. That's got some extra screws throughout and you can easily remove that. It will shorten up the actual length of the card. The cooler will overhang it, but you don't need all that for cooling. I cleaned up the GPU die, the memory modules as you can see here. And then it's time to go ahead and put some uh, nail polish down, some thermal paste. And we can see the thermal pad itself is about one millimeter thick because this is a copper shim 0.8 millimeters so we're going to go ahead and get the ball rolling by applying nail polish around the smds or around the memory modules on the smds to protect it from any uh, connectivity or contact and then go on from there i'm going to use the same shroud though because these fans are pretty good just remove all the extra bezeling limiting airflow all right, so about to get ready to put everything together and uh, get it put it on there. I did put the thermal paste a little bit thick because I'm worried about the shims on the right and the left being a little bit bigger. They're basically one mil, but they look a little bit bigger than the thermal pads, whereas the 0.8 mil was right where the thermal pads are at. Obviously, things are going to squish out and level, but just in case, I put a little bit extra thermal paste on the core just so that way we can make sufficient sufficient contact to the cold plate we'll see if you messed up and see how thermals are let's get this put back together still using the stock fan shroud these fans are good enough uh, gonna give it a little bit of a cleaning and just leave all this other plastic crap off obviously it's been a number of days since i originally put the gpu back together and unfortunately the copper shims didn't work out you really need 0.7 or 0.8 mil all the way around i use one mil around the outer edges of the GPU die, as I mentioned in the previous section, and the left and right side, obviously, were not allowing sufficient contact to the core. So because I didn't have more 0 0.8, 0 0.7 mil copper shims, I went basically back to regular thermal pads, and that was perfectly fine. Uh, anyways, the cold plate for this particular GPU is all copper anyway, so there's not really much point to it. Uh, it does provide adequate cooling, um, especially if you have decent thermal pads and on the system right now. Um, it, yes, this is a recording because it's super cold right now. But you can see that we dropped at the very bottom here, we dropped GPU 8 down to 92 degrees on the memory versus where it was originally sitting at 102, 100 and C. And then the core, of course, is down a little bit more. This is not our 24 seven overclocked, as I mentioned in a previous video. And on a cool day, we're hitting a higher mega hash with a better clock setup, tuning, all that good stuff. I just wanted to keep the clocks the same from test to test to make sure that we, we see an actual improvement with our thermal results. We have, um, but in some cases, copper shim mining is not really necessary. Just a good set of thermal pads and some good thermal paste will get the job done. So we were able to drop, let's see here. So if we go to one of my thermal tests, 96 on the Epic ah, XFX, say that five times fast, um, RX 5700 XT, uh, I believe this is the thick version, 98, 98, 102. So for us to drop down to uh, 92, in the same test environment, same testing setup, same clock, same everything um, is quite significant. So we lost anywhere from 10 to 6 degrees Celsius on the memory and then dropped the core from 76 to 63. Uh, I say that was a job well, well worth it. And as we can see, when we go into the Hive OS, um, we've been very stable. We had a few drops here and there, a system restart because of my internet, but system has been very stable 
since I made these adjustments. So that is the data that I have on the XFX thick. I believe this is the V3 one. A little bit less bezeling, but a little bit too much for me. Um, just replacing stock thermal pads and thermal paste, copper shim mod. If I had the right size, probably would have been a little bit better. If you want to attempt it on your own, go for it. But for my circumstance, as hot as it is here in Florida inside of a grow tent, uh, thermal pads and thermal paste did the job just fine. So do me a favor on the way out. Make sure to hit the like button. Don't forget to get subscribed, hit the notification bell to stay up to date, as well as check out links in the description to help support the channel and what we do here. And I'll catch you in the next video. Take care. Thank you.